back everybody. On deck today we're talking about the SL1. Take a good look at that sucker. See how small it is. Um, very small, light, obviously integrated front sight as well, as you can see there. Um, it's kind of taking the forum by storm. A lot of a lot of people are saying why the hell hasn't this been made before? Honestly, after using it for a couple weeks now, I'm I'm kind of one of those people. Um, it works really well, which we'll show you coming up. We'll do some more daytime shooting as we've been doing throughout the review already. Do some nighttime shooting, show you how to how it illuminates things versus other lights out there on the market, and uh, show you how to make adjustments, some of the features of it, all that jazz. But anyway, guys, that's what's coming up next. Let's talk about activation. It's got basically three modes. If you turn the tail cap all the way to the right, you have a constant on. If you back it off a little bit, just like that, it will go to momentary on only. So you can either push the tail cap here, the recessed tail cap, for momentary on, or you can actually just push on the side of the light like that from either side for ambi use like that for momentary on. And if you want to go ahead and lock it out, you just turn the tail cap a little bit more, and it is locked out. Uh, so that way you're not going to have any sort of uh, negligent light discharges and you won't wear your battery out just going to the range or anything like that. When you first look at the light, it looks like it's actually two pieces, but it's not. Obviously you take the tail cap off, that is a piece, but the actual front sight mount, the front sight and the mount I should say, are one piece machined along with the body of the light out of a 7075 T6 aluminum. And the light up front is the Malkoff light. Um, 250 lumen rated uh, brightness, but reality I've matched this up with a few other lights that are uh, or that claim the same amount of uh, output and it looks a little bit brighter. And it, the light is actually coming in right at uh, 6200 uh, K in terms of temperature, so very white light as you guys will see coming up later on in the review as well. The um, lens here is a uh, anti-reflective coated um, acrylic lens. And it's also recessed so that way when your weapon's firing, if you have muzzle brake on there, if it's near, near the end of your muzzle, it's not going to get a lot of uh, carbon buildup on there. So it's still going to continue to put out that uh, nice bright white light uh, throughout firing. Zeroing the front sight is just like any other classic AR front sight out there. The only difference is you have to actually loosen the screw on the right side first and then make your adjustments just as you would in any other front sight. It is a front sight. The front sight, I should say, is not a standard front sight, but it does come with a, a front sight adjustment tool. So simple as can be, loosen the screw, make your adjustments, elevation adjustments, tighten it back down, and you're back in business. The body of the light is 7075 aluminum like I just mentioned, but the screws, the bolts, the front sight post are all made out of steel. And that steel is melanated and nitrocarburized for corrosion resistance, surface hardening uh, treatments. Basically all the good stuff that melaniting or nitrocarburizing uh, does to metal components as I talked about on the channel here over the years. Um, the light itself and the mount come in uh, weighing in at just 3.2 ounces. Overall length there is uh, 3.4 inches. and. Uh, if you look down, um, as you have it mounted up there on the gun, the height over the rail of these ears here is going to come in right around 1.5 inches. So very low profile, low snag design, and it's compatible with every red dot I've tried it with or optic that I've tried it with so far because it is a standard AR front sight height. The two lights you see in front of you here, both the uh, Streamlight TLR and the Surefire X300 Ultra, probably the most common competitors in terms of uh, lights that are going to be mounted at the 12 o'clock position on, on uh, AR style weapons. Um, we're going to go ahead and show you here just how it, it compares in terms of size. You can see the length um, issues there with the light. Pretty similar all around. The Surefire is a good bit longer, um, but they're the... Uh, SL1's much slimmer obviously and it does come with that integrated mount on there as well as the sight that the other two competitors don't do. Up next we're going to go ahead and uh, go outside and show you a comparison in terms of the output of these lights and then after that I'll roll in a little bit of uh, footage with some night shooting I did here with the SL1 at 50 and 75 meters respectively on an 8 inch target. Here you see the Streamlight TLR, that little shack right there is about 20 meters away and the fence right there is probably about uh, 30, maybe 35. So that's the uh, TRL 
and here you see the SL1. You can see pretty good spill, better than the TRL really. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and light up the TLR. You see maybe, eh, I'd say pretty equivalent hot spots with the spill being better on the SL1. TRL1, SL1. In front of you there is the 500 lumen Surefire that you just saw. Very, very bright hotspot as you see. Almost whiting itself out on my shed here. Now, stop that. And again, here's your SL1. Definitely a little lighter color, a whiter color. Um, whereas the Surefire here has more of a yellow tint to it, so it's an advantage, I'd say, for the SL1. But again, 500 lumen Surefire and the SL1 back to back. SL1 on your right, Surefire on your left, and switched. Before I wrap up the review, one thing I want to cover briefly is mounting light at the 12 o'clock position. Now, without a doubt, all light mount positions have pros and cons, but 12 o'clock has relatively little cons and some interesting pros. So, first up, we're going to talk about ergonomics. So really, regardless of where you put your hand on your rifle, whether or not you do a thumbs over grip, rocking your vertical foregrip, uh, gripping it underneath the handguard, either way your thumb is relatively close to be able to activate that light. And that goes for whether or not you're firing strong hand or weak hand. Um, also, we'll talk about shadowing. 12 o'clock provides a shadow uh, from your uh, barrel below your line of sight, so directly below your line of sight. So you're getting a full field of view, uh, shadowing below, which is really probably the best place that you can have it if you're going to have it somewhere, because you are going to have it somewhere unless your light's out in front of your muzzle, which for obvious reasons you don't want. So that's a good thing, and also firing from barriers or firing from cover. If you can get your muzzle on target, your light will be on target. It's not going to be obstructed if you're firing around the door, coming through a hallway, tight corners, and things like that. So um, good. that's some of the pros of it. Really, I can't think of any of the cons except for shadowing, but that's even a very good shadowing uh, position there at the 6 o'clock. So um, that's just the 12 o'clock position briefly. Uh, next up, let's talk about price because price is always important. Uh, this one comes to market right at $235, which, I mean, seems relatively high, but if you think about what you're getting for it, you're getting a high-quality light, you're getting that Malkoff driver, you're getting an extremely well-engineered light, you're getting a mount coming with it. So if you look at some of the Surefire or Streamlight options out there, most of them are coming with a mount. Um, getting a front sight in there, so if you, it's a very high quality front sight, like I said, steel, melanited, um, very sturdy, very uh, very lightweight, very sleek profile. So if you think of adding all the costs of those up for a comparable quality of uh, individual parts, you're probably not going to come in much under that. And uh, having it all on one sleek little platform like this really is pretty nice in my opinion. So reasonable cost there, especially from a new company coming into the market. And with as well thought out as this light is, really everything was thought about. I'm going to go ahead and put some notes below because I'm sure I forgot something in this review. Some of the features I really didn't talk about, but I mean it's just well thought out, ergonomic, works well. Um, really does everything you want it to do. An excellent little product, but uh, as always guys, if you have any questions about this light, anything else I talk about here on the channel, feel free to post below in the comments section. But you can also uh, post below at my Facebook page if you don't have a YouTube account. But as always guys, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next video.